Hi, this video is on Tormac's new control software, Pathpilot, and machining a little steel octagon ring spanner that I can hang on the side of my machine to make tool changing a little bit quicker and easier. I've got a block of um, scrap steel in there, and I'm just about to drill the holes for the clearance in the corners of the octagon ring spanner shape. I really like Path Pilot so far. Um, it's uh, got some really good features. Still a few bugs left to sort out, as I discovered the other day, but I'm sure they'll get there. They're really committed to producing a good product. Just to start it up. Slide the Maxwell slider right down. Push cycle start. Now you can control the Have a look and see that you're about the right distance from the work. That looks about right. So we can go 100% now. Okay, so we're doing the little clearance holes for the ring spanner corners. Just got a 2mm stub drill in there. So while that's drilling, I can close the door and I've got my uh, electrical control patch flat down because later on I'll be doing some rough machining of the spanner and it'll be spraying in all directions I imagine. So it's a bit more clean cut than Mac 3 system um, and it's very tidy. There's not a lot of superfluous controls that you can get sidetracked with and I really like that. Um, while that's running, I'll just go over a couple of details. I've got these mobile tool storage blocks that I'm just getting organized with now and this is going to be the one for the current job. So I have tool one, two, three, four and so on. So I just measure off and pop my current tools into the block that I've set in the tool table. Um, I'll just use this uh, cheap digital vernier as a uh, digital height gauge and this is the uh, spindle r replicant replica block and so I zero the uh, vernier down on that surface so that's equal to the surface of the spindle. Here's some of my other blocks. These are going to become just sort of commonly used tools and um, these are a couple of setting tools here. Pointer 52, the Wobbler 51 and my Heimer number 50. Um, the main roughing tool to make the spanner is a 8mm carbide tool and um, it's just a dull one that I've touched up on the corner. And this is a good way to get extra life out of your cutter. Just show you that. Let's go over to, I've got a, um, a, a diamond wheel on a bench grinder here. And um, I don't know how well I can show this. But I just grind a little chamfer, um, depending on how blunt the tool is, of maybe half a millimetre on each corner um, with the right at rake angle. And, um, the advantage of that is that when you're machining you've got a um, 45 degree angle and that um, does two good things. It, it, it's a good roughing shape so the chips that come off move away from the tool better than a, a vertical surface and also it's less load on the cutter uh, with a 45 ground face than uh, with a vertical face. Um, and also you get another another um, cutter out of the other cutter, it becomes a, another reasonably new cutter. And when you're just profiling something like this, I better clear those chips. It's quite a good way to go for roughing. You'll see it running in a sec. Okay, call for tool two. Take tool two out of the block. And away we go. the coolant on really high pressure here because 
some of the uh, deep hole machining will take quite a bit of excavating this floor. It's quite 
nice. Good thing about a ring spanner is that you get a much better wear on the cross flats of the drawbar. I've been using a open-ended spanner in recent years and that's wearing my drawbars out. I can see the flats are getting rounded and bruised and um, I use a nitrided washer here. You could use a hardened steel washer. I use a nitrided P20 washer. And if you have um, plenty of molybdenum grease on that and on the thread, it isn't really a wearing item. So I think it's worth having a really good spanner. There's, there's, this is a uh, octagon spanner, so there's not much movement for uh, the flats and gauge. Well, here's a little video clip of um, CAD CAM to break up the workshop videos. Um, I use Bobcad Cam version 25 which I find pretty easy to use. It's quite intuitive. You just follow the prompts and tick the boxes. Um, this is the spanner simple geometry. Uh, if we look at the details of the design it's a um, an octagon so that the square drawbar flats can engage in two different positions. Um, that means you've got limited movement required to engage the spanner. Um, 45 degrees in one direction or 22 and a half maximum each way. Um, this is the little hole here um, that uh, gives you clearance. So you can see uh, in this area is the engagement uh, of the flat. So it's not quite engaging on the corner which is, saves wear on the corner. The, the corner of the square drawbar flats enter into that little clearance hole, a two millimeter clearance hole. I did think about using a standard ring spanner which uh, usually has double hexagon which is 12 uh, corners um, and you could you could buy a, about a 16 millimeter AF hexagon spanner but the trouble is that the angle, this angle is not a right angle, it's quite an obtuse angle and the engagement would mean a lot of wear on the corners uh, so it probably wouldn't last very long. So let's just run a simulation of this um, program I've just oops, just put through, uh, slow it down a wee bit okay, we're cutting out some clearance there this is the final stage and running the chamfering tool around it.